Hey everybody, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school computer science teacher. We're working on this space shooter game which currently has only one enemy being displayed and we're going to adjust the game screen class to spawn enemies at regular intervals. So we have a few things that we need to add. Um, the biggest thing I suppose is that we're going to change this object here, this enemy ship object, into a linked list like we have with the lasers. So let's start there. Linked list of type enemy class or rather that holds sorry, that holds enemy ship objects, and I'm going to call it uh, enemy ships. Is that clear enough, or should I call it enemy ship list, maybe? That way it'll be clear what exactly we're making. Now we're going to get a whole bunch of errors because enemy ship no longer exists. So I do want to have enemy ship list, though, become a new linked list, and we use the diamond operator to construct that, and this is all going to move in just a moment. So essentially this code here is going to need to be called many many times every time a new ship uh, has to be created. So I'm going to cut that and we're going to move it into a new class. Now I have to decide where to put it. I think I'll put it right down after the render method. The method is going to be called private void uh, let's call it spawn enemy ships and I'm gonna give it a delta time because it's gonna keep track of whether it's a good time to spawn a new ship or not. So I'm just gonna paste that bit of code that we had there. Um, we're gonna need to work on it a little bit. The first thing, I'll, um, just to get this kind of working, enemy, oops, enemy ship list dot add. So that's how we create a new enemy ship and there we go, brackets at the end. And so now every time this method is called, it's gonna add a new ship. Now that's gonna be a little bit extreme. We're gonna need some timing to go along with this. So let's head up to the timing area. We have some background offsets, back, maximum scrolling speed and so on. So we're gonna need another private float, um, which is gonna be the time between enemy spawns. You could do this differently. For example, you could make sure there were always a certain number of enemies on the screen, or you, this number could even change over time, speeding up if necessary. Uh, let's make it every, I don't know, let's make it every three seconds. We'll see if that works. Uh, and then we're also going to need another private float, which is going to be the enemy spawn timer, which will start at zero. So it begins at zero and increases until it gets to that number three seconds and then an enemy is spawned and it's and it's reset. Okay, let's head back down to um, oops, spawn enemy ships and we're going to use now that those two variables that we just made. So the first one was the enemy spawn timer. It needs to be increased by the delta time. So if the enemy spawn timer is greater than the time between the enemy spawns, that's when we want to spawn a new enemy ship. And we also want to decrease the spawn timer by the uh, time between enemy spawns. So once we've gotten to three seconds, we make a new ship and we subtract three seconds from the timer so that it doesn't... Um, Repeat. We did the very same thing in the uh, in the last one with the uh, the direction vector change that happened at random intervals. Uh, sorry, at regular intervals like this. Now there's a bunch of places where we use the variable enemy ship, and now we're going to need to use the enemy ships list variable and go through and um, do a bunch of things to all of the enemy ships. Now, in the render method, I'm just scrolling here. I see two places that we used the enemy ship here and here. And what we're going to do is make an iterator. We did this a couple of uh, episodes ago. We're going to make an iterator to go through the list. So rather than making an iterator for this and then making another iterator down here, I'm going to combine these two into a single iterator. Now to make this happen though, I'm going to have to move this chunk of code out of the way. The scrolling background, I'm just going to move it to the very top, put it there, inside the beginning of the render method just after the batch has begun. Then the background gets rendered and then I can start working on some things. Now the, I'm just going to reorganize a little more here. Player ship update. I'm going to move up here. 
and then I've got move enemies and enemy ship update enemy ships draw. Okay, so as I'm thinking about this on the fly here, I'm realizing that my move enemies method will also need an iterator inside of it. So maybe instead I'll make a single iterator and I'll change the move enemies method to just be a single, like move one enemy at a time, and I'll pass the enemy in as a parameter. So let, I'm going to do that. So let me just start right here. So I need a list iterator, and it will, I think I can do this, enemy ship list iterator. I have to see about my diamond operator there. I might have to put enemy ship there. I think I do. And this will be the enemy ship list dot uh, list iterator right there. So that's going to give me the appropriate kind of list iterator. Um, if you haven't seen this before, maybe go back a couple episodes to where we started using it. I think it was with the lasers when we started using list iterators. Okay, so now we're going to say while the enemy ship list iterator dot has next, it still has ships that we haven't handled yet, we're going to do all of this stuff. And it's going to go like this. Uh, en enemy, uh, enemy ship, enemy ship equals enemy ship list iterator dot next. So this retrieves the specific, the, like the next enemy out of that list and it saves it or stores it, a reference to it in the enemy ship variable, which you'll notice I was the same name as the one I used down here. So I don't have to change that. Now this move enemies though, I'm going to have to pass in the enemy ship itself. Let's change this shift F6 to move enemy. And let's go down to that method now and pass in that parameter. Enemy ship, enemy ship. Okay, now it uses that specific enemy ship and moves the one ship in the appropriate way. Whew. Okay, let's head back up to where we were. So the big change here is that we've now made a list and we've used a list iterator to perform the same actions one at a time, uh, for like for one enemy ship at a time. Now we have some more red. Let's go see what's happening down here. Uh, detecting collisions. So we have a similar issue here. We have an iterator on lasers, but each laser is looking for a single ship. And so inside of here, we're going to need to make and use an iterator. Now this is not going to be uh, super tidy. We're going to have to make iterators over and over because we have to compare every laser to every ship. So right here, we have to do the same list iterator stuff. So list iterator, and it's going to be of type enemy ship. And it's going to be the enemy ship list iterator. Keep going here, same as last time. Make ourselves a list iterator. And then we will say while enemy ship list iterator dot has next. Enemy ship, enemy ship equals enemy ship list iterator dot next. Now this is exactly what we just did with the last kind of method. So I've wrapped that up in some braces. So here's our while loop. It's going to go through the entire enemy ship list. And for each one, if the enemy ship intersects with that laser, then we want to have the enemy ship get hit and the iterator um, is removes the laser from it. Now that's not a very good name, iterator. So let me just change that. Shift F6, I'm going to call it uh, laser oops, laser list iterator is a better name. So that's refactoring. Whew, that's better now. So remove the, the laser that hit the enemy ship. Now this bit here, the enemy ship getting hit, we're going to handle that in more detail, uh, I think next time, but not this time. We're just going to let the uh, laser be absorbed if you want by the enemy ship. So this while loop now, that's the big deal that lets us go through the entire enemy ship list one at a time to see if the laser intersects with it. You'll notice a laser can only hit one enemy ship at a time. Also, there's one more thing. If we do end up hitting the um, enemy ship with the laser, then we don't need to continue checking to see if that laser 
uh, hits another ship, right? We want to stop there, so I'm going to use a break statement here that will break out of this while loop and it will stop iterating through the enemy ship list. After the while loop is done, it ends this while loop and returns to the top looking at the next laser and we'll start over with the enemy ship list here again. Okay, let's keep going down. We have one more issue. This is the render lasers method. And at the moment we have this, if the enemy ship can fire a laser, go ahead and do that. Now it feels to me like we're gonna need another iterator. An alternative is to go way back up to where we did create that iterator in the render method and we could handle it right here. Let the enemy ship try to draw um, uh, or produce a laser right then as well. So this is a, a choice that you make. You can either make a new iterator right here or use the one that we already have from before. Um, I think I'm just going to make a new iterator just to save some time here. So list iterator enemy ship. Uh, in truth I probably would go back and make a, a different change but this will be fine. So enemy ship list iterator enemy ship list dot list iterator while enemy ship list iterator dot has next. So while there are some left, we want to go through and acquire the enemy ship reference. And now if it can fire the laser, do that and add all of its lasers to the list. Now notice that we're not drawing the lasers here. We just go ahead and do that further down because it doesn't matter which ship the lasers came from they are produced and added into the list. So we have one more um, change to make, or uh, addition rather, in the render method. At some point, we have to tell it to actually try to make new enemy ships. And I'm gonna try to do that right here, uh, which is the, I think it was called, sp uh, yeah, spawn enemy ships, and we give it the delta time. Um, up until this point, there have been no enemy ships produced on the screen at all. Remember, we took out the one from the very beginning. And so now we should start producing enemy ships every, I think it was every three seconds. Oh, there's the first one, and it's moving randomly. There's three. And they just keep popping into the screen. You'll see they come in at the very top edge of the screen in a random X value and the Y value is always the same. So now we have uh, randomly produced a whole bunch of enemies and they'll keep popping in here. Okay, so that's it for this one. Next time we're going to look at destroying enemies, having them removed from the screen and also producing an explosion animation. Okay, I'll see you next time. Thanks.